could players who shone in the 70s and the 80s, players like Kenny Dalglish, Gary Lineker, Graham Souness, could they grace football today and keep up with it, even star in it? Graham Souness was on the show the other day and keen to get Danny's reaction to this. And we got on that very subject, uh, Danny. Not only could he play today, Graham said, yeah, uh, I would stroll through it. I would love to play today because I think it'd be an absolute doddle playing today. All our training at Liverpool was to do it one and two touch on far inferior pitches to what they have today. That means we had better technique because we could do it on ploughed fields where the guys today, you know, do it on carpets. <laughs> we had smaller squads, squads. I think we won the league one year with, I think, using 15 players. I'd play 65 games a season. We didn't fly to places. We would have, you know, get stuck on motorways and we would um, maybe not live the best of lifestyles but I think it was tough then to win the league we could get beaten by anyone on any given day and that is still the same here and at this time of year as I remember it was always as it is today three or four teams that were fighting for the league midfield players today get away with murder you see them and the, some are regarded as proper midfield players they get on the ball and they pass it sideways if you had come to Melwood our training ground at Liverpool and Ronnie Moran our coach and, and watched a small side of the game, you know the most common thing you would have heard? Play it forward. Play it forward. Stop. He would stop the game. Look, he'd say, I'm 50. I can pass it sideways. You play, play it forward. Play it forward. Look forward. Today, they go down. This is what happens and I had a term for it at Liverpool and I fell foul that once in my second home, my second game at home for Liverpool. And it would be, it would be rude of me to mention the term they had because it was referring to a player who played at that time. What it meant, don't be doing a, a here, son. You go back into the back four, take a nice easy pass, no pressure, and you pass it square. That's, that was called doing A. The modern midfield player does it all the time now. They go into the back four, get a ball and pass it out to the fullback under no pressure. If I had gone into the back four and said to Alan Hanson or Matt Lawrence, give me the ball, they would have told me to off. <laughs> So that was Graham Souness the other day, Danny, is with Sam and myself. Um, not only could he have played, it would have been a doddle to play today. Um, what's your take on that? I think for him, yes, it would have, It would be. I've got absolutely no doubt that Graham Souness would have been one of the top players today because the best players then would still be the best players now. They just would have adapted to the physicality changes, the sports science, strength and conditioning. There's a, there, is a tra there is a difference in terms of the numbers, in terms of what players, the power, the speed, the high intensity stuff is a bit better, better now. But that's partly to do with what he was talking about with the pitches, you know, the strength, the, 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 the diets, the, all the detail. But Sunes would, yes, be one of the best now, as he was then. Could you have played in his time? I'd like to think so. 65 because games in a season. We did. We played 60, 60 plus games. 60 plus games? Yeah, well, if you win it, well, the reason he played that many is because they're in all competitions. You can only play that many if you're in one of the best teams. So you've got to be successful. But the, the most resilient characters, the most technically gifted players, would be the best in any generation. They would just adapt to the other stuff with the, with the help around them and support. I've got no question around it. But there is a there is a difference now, a little bit, in terms of. I mean, he's right. One thing I like listening to him about was the. The lack of bravery on midfield players these days. I think that there is a there's a there's a numbers based um, game for a lot of players who who want to hit certain numbers and targets. Because I saw it when I was playing with players I worked with in the room video rooms, and they're like, "Yeah, but my numbers, my numbers," and I'm like, "You're not impacting the game." And Suey's right about that because that's a lack of bravery. Well, I had the I had the yeah I had the and, and also one in because everything gets given to you numbers these days as players. So if your numbers are down and but you. Tunes is right. I mean, I had the, the the privilege of being at Melwood with the likes of Ronnie Moran, so I can vouch for what he's saying. I had Ronnie Moran screaming stuff to me, you know. He, pass it forward. Well, I did pass it forward. I I I was all right in that respect. But even in terms of running without the ball, there was a great thing with Ronnie Moran at Liverpool and the, the old boot room thing is you, the constant movement as well as the technical ability, and that was something he helped me with. But the best players and him included, Tunes was a brilliant footballer. I mean. He would be one of the best now, for sure. Mm. For sure. Mm. You've been out of the game for, what, 10 years? Yeah. Has it, has it even changed since then? I mean, if, if, we, if we were to say to you, if your fitness was up to it, give us a half this Saturday for Liverpool against whoever. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be able to get fit enough. 
But in terms of the game change, no, not really. I think the game changed while I was playing. I was part, I was lucky because I was at a wonderful football club that shit when it was changing. When Julio come in and we changed the intensity of the training, the the nutrition changed, the discipline changed, the drinking culture stopped, all of that stuff. So that I don't mean technical ability change, but the the professionalism and the attitude which creates a higher physical output and more demands on you. So you have to be the only thing with some older play, some players back then would they have had the discipline to change their lifestyle to be able to that that that's yeah. a question mark. Yeah. But I think the best do. You know, we did. Like some me, Jamie Carragher, Stephen Gerrard, young lads at Liverpool, we like going out and all, all of a sudden Nullier comes in, things are changing, you've got to change your life. And he stopped that. Well, you do it in conjunction with someone guiding you, don't right, you? Right, right. You have to act, you, you are your own person. You know, yeah. I had a decision to make to move out of the city I grew up in, away from friends. I had a decision to make to sit at home in the evenings and do normal things instead of going out looking for girls and having a bevy. You know, you make those decisions in conjunction with some leadership and guidance. Yeah. But... Going back to Suey, I mean, he, yeah, he'd have been one of the best. I think it was the way he explained it as well, Simon. Really good, and, yeah. And I totally take it that Suey oh, yeah. could do it now. No, I think the interesting terminology that we didn't challenge him on was doddle. Because, it wouldn't have been a doddle. Because no. that was, was it a doddle for him in, in his time then? And if you said to Graham, was it a doddle for you playing in that? And he would have probably said, no, it wasn't a doddle. I was just a very good player. So given the circumstances of the way that football's played now and the difficult differences in his game having to adapt, because he was a very physical player, then it wouldn't have been a doddle, but I have no doubt Graham would have been an exceptional player at this time. What he, he probably was meant in his, in his own time. Yeah, what he probably meant by the word was he's probably thinking that he didn't have someone coming through the back of him trying to break it, but vice versa, he wouldn't have been able to do it either. Luckily for Graham, he had the best of both, didn't he? Because he was technically brilliant yeah. as well. I mean, being the president of his own fan club, I think he meant it would be a doddle because he's so <laughs> bloody good. It wouldn't be. A doddle. <laughs> it wouldn't be a doddle. Well, there's one, Danny. I mean, uh, many people reacting to what Sooner said. Uh, no name in this, but I would love to see Sooner, so a player from the 80s, 90s, play a high press for 90 minutes. It would be hilarious. Nobody plays high press for ninety minutes. That's a myth. No, no team, no team high presses for ninety minutes. It's not possible. Mm. Arsenal did it for a half a game against Liverpool brilliantly. City do it occasionally, and then they wear you out by keeping the ball. The best teams don't do ninety minute presses, and the worst teams don't. They sit, they sit back. There's no such thing as a ninety minute press. But it's an interesting phenomenon that about players of different generations. I mean, Graham said the other day about the fact it would be a doddle, and I think I think Graham Sooners could have played at any. At any generation, Absolutely. Um, and then Michael Owen was talking about in, in the discussion I had with him about players in this generation being nowhere near as good as the players of his generation. Yeah. So there's this constant argument and debate about where the game has gone, what is better and what's not better. Well, Michael's make what well, I think Michael's point there is a good, great one you bring up is because what what he's talking about is the change in demand for what type of player. There is more demand now than ever for physically capable players who are really athletic and durable for for this type of game. Right. Compared to just technical. Yeah. And I, I think that's a fair point. Yeah. But that's even more reason and gives more credibility to Graham's argument. Who, who's the nearest thing to Sunus today? Someone who is creative, strong, a leader and a finisher. And also, don't think of noising them up. Don't dream of noising them up What's because that? he'll have you. He'll do He'll have you. Putting it about, you know, oh, giving it a big Don't mix it up with him. No, I, I get it now. I've never heard that expression before. So creative, yeah, yeah, he sure was that. Could he finish? You bet he could. Was he strong? Oh, yeah. Could he lead? Yes. Um... I don't think there's one person in the I game nothing, today. Nothing springs to mind. Gerard was used when he came. When he, Gerard was a Sunes type, and you could say you could argue that Bellingham can do it all. You can, but the thing, the thing is, the physicality has gone from the game. Yes. So you're never going to see no, the Graham still put Sunes it about. physicality, yeah. and that's why there's no comparison. No, well, just on that. No, I, I see your point, but people spring to mind with Sui making horrendous tackles and breaking someone's leg. I don't just mean it that way. But, no, but Sui it. was tenacious and aggressive. Yeah, Now, you can still point. be... If you watch Bellingham play... Yeah. I mean, Declan Rice is brilliantly aggressive without giving uh, uh, give, give, giving cards, getting cards and being sent off the pitch and suspended all the time. He's really aggressive in his press. Yeah. And, and Sui was really aggressive with his defending. Mm. But Bellingham, when you watch him play without the ball, is super aggressive. He occasionally wipes someone out and take a yell. He's got that in him. But in terms yeah. of comparing, yeah, it's hard because yeah. you'd get away it's, with more. It's tough then. to try and do it. It's There's not I, many Graham Sunnesses out there no. in, in answer to your question. I, I sat in a restaurant with him in Glasgow many years ago and I said to him, you know the thing about that challenge um, that you, you you know against the Stoya Bucharest player when the guy went down, he went right through him. I mean, it was a shocking challenge. I think even Graham would admit it. The interesting thing, he had a mouthful of food and he was 
listening. The interesting thing to me, Graham, was that, you know, you had possession. <laughs> you had possession of the ball. He didn't find it funny. Did he Did, not? No. Do you know what's great? Do you know what's weird? And I, I haven't really, I haven't met him a couple of times, Graham, but of course, admire him from afar. And the, um, he was my dad's favourite player. And mine was Kenny when I first started, because he yeah. was a bit before. Yeah. And the really weird thing when I when if I click on and watch Graham do anything, the Graham soon has look my dad looked really like Graham. So I had this like, like kind of weird thing for me because my yeah. dad's favourite player, but he looks like my dad. And every time if I stick him on here on the YouTube, he gives me a quick oh, looks like my old man. <laughs> so I think I like him more because of that. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.